Allah. Peace. Happiness. Contentment. Virtues make our life better. Let us ponder on our virtues. Virtues for life. Hello and welcome to Virtues for Life. This program is about virtues. I am BK Sister Denise and this is a program of conversations between Brahma Kumars and Brahma Kumaris going into the depth of all the different virtues. The spiritual dimension in life is the one that causes us to actually shift from being mere consumers into becoming contributors and catalysts for positive global change. Today I have with me at Godlywood Studio Sister Morni from Australia. Welcome Morni Ben. <laughs> Uh, Sister Morni is uh, with the Future of Power. The Future of Power is a very wonderful program that travels throughout India, bringing together um, people of significance, importance in different areas of Indian society, together with people from foreign countries who are very interested in spirituality. Sister Moni has been many years in Hong Kong, where she served, and then in Cambodia, and at our retreat center in Wilton, Australia. So welcome to Thank Virtues you. for Life. Moni, let's begin with your definition of gentleness. Gentleness is the subject we're going to be looking at today. I would say it's not to harm, not to cause any hurt. So it's connected with nonviolence? Yes, very much. Okay. Now, gentleness, sometimes we think of gentleness as um, vulnerable, soft, yielding, um, but in a hostile world like we have today, is this... Um, uh, is it realistic? Is it practical? Elephants are also very gentle. <laughs> in Not fact, I've seen one. Mood. I've seen one in Thailand giving a massage to someone. And this is, I think, the kind of gentleness where we can use it as a virtue. Not that it's just um, a nature that we can't help ourselves, a kind of a helplessness, but where we are powerful, where we are wise, and yet we choose gentleness. So this reminds me of this phrase, the gentle giant. Mm, yes. Okay, so because, I mean, elephants are powerful. Um, but so I think you're, you're giving us a very nice symbol. Uh, we have also this idea of the Maharati. Mm. Uh, the Maharati being the great warrior, the highest level of warrior, but at the same time gentle. So non-violence with a capacity to be strong. Because even the elephant, it's so big, but it lets a human being become its mahout, you know, its um, yes, the master. controller, master. That's great gentleness. Yes, yes. And uh, the, the elephant with the young are very mm. gentle. Yes. Their nature. I mean, of course, there might be things that provoke, and this is, I think, why we get challenged in our nature, but by nature, I would say an elephant's gentle. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you were um, bringing up some, some thoughts in my mind that I think are um, really connected with this, um, this uh, thing of being, um, you know, gentle, but not um, uh, unable to defend oneself. No, I think, I think gentleness, any of these virtues, I think needs to be a choice. We need to master them. If we have, you know, um, gentleness because of being afraid, it wouldn't be a virtue or a power. 
Right. It would okay, just weakness. be a weakness, yeah. yeah. Now, I think there's bad press, in a sense, for a virtue like gentleness, because it is generally perceived as a weakness in the world today. Everybody learns how to be tough, uh, to be strong, to be fast, and somebody who's gentle is mm. swept out of the way. And so how can we perhaps change the general impression so that gentleness is perceived as something powerful yeah living in hong kong i always saw the advertisements young aggressive person needed for this business you know like they always use this word aggressive yeah. and yet in uh, when we are working if we can stay in control if we can stay centered then we are much more effective so i don't see aggressiveness as really something that will make me effective. It's a very short-term thing anyway. You know, this word gentleness, I'm thinking of it in how it's used in certain other ways. For example, we use the word gentleman uh, to refer to somebody who's not just gentle, but who has a lot of other qualities. Mm. And in the olden days, we even used to use the word gentlewoman. So in that sense, how do you see gentle in terms of um, how it adds to the charisma, the personality of someone in perhaps high social mm. position? In fact, it's, it's referred to for people who are quite royal. Yes. You know, when be people behave in a very um, polite, royal, respectful manner, then it's considered gentle. So perhaps it's like you are in a position of great power, but you don't have to be aggressive about it. Yeah. Your gentleness doesn't imply that you're weak, rather perhaps the opposite. And I think that's what real power is when we hold it inside, but we don't have to show it. Now, you work with the uh, project called The Future of Power. Do you look at power in terms of these virtues? Yeah, what we talk about is soft power. Okay, let's and talk so a bit more about And so this is like so this like gentle, gentle power. power. Mm. Uh, yes. So tell us more about soft power. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, often softness even, like gentleness, is seen as weakness. Mm -hmm. And Martin Luther King said the crisis of our time is that we have immoral power. Immoral power. Could immoral, be power. immoral power. Well, now power is quite aggressive. It's corrupt, corrosive. It's hard. People, a country's power is measured by its consumption, the guns that it has, the money that it has. This is the measurement of power. And perhaps the amount of damage it does. Mm, yeah. But what Martin Luther King said is we have immoral power, but also powerless morals. That's very interesting. Immoral power and powerless morals. What do you mean by par powerless morals? Yes, yeah, so I think when gentleness or any of these virtues are not understood, like humility, mm. because of humility we can become like a servant and we don't know boundaries and we don't have self-respect. It can happen. So unless we make morals powerful, they're not going to get good press because they won't be effective, they won't work, and they're not, in a, in a sense, virtues. Now, morals, the way I always think of morals is um, it's the prevailing views of the majority of people. That's the original Latin root of the word, mores. And so you're talking about powerless morals. So what happened to our global society so that our morals, which is supposed to be our strength, became lost power or became weak? What caused that? I think it's been quite systematic, actually. I think people have been discouraged from thinking for themselves yes. and have been fed, you know, these kinds of um, morals in a detrimental way, like women have been, you know, told that if they're submissive and all of this, then they're good women, you know, so yes. it's been very manipulated, I would say. So who is um, causing all this? What's, where's the origin? <laughs> well, I think it's now in politics, in education, in religion. I think it's throughout. So, so that's you... why we have to start thinking for ourselves. And that's the big thing, I think. 
We okay, all need do, to be do seekers. Do you see a, a correlation between hard power, masculine power, soft power, more feminine power being in opposition of each other? Definitely the feminine qualities, and I think men and women both need feminine qualities, so certainly. not to be a feminist, but feminine qualities are certainly not balanced at the moment with masculine qualities, and this is why our society is in imbalance. So would you see a connection between immoral power and imbalance? Yeah, and manipulation. Okay. Yeah. So um, what's the cause of manipulation? Why would a person manipulate? What's driving that? So of course for gain. <laughs> So we're because, talking about greed. Yes, greed and um, if people are submissive, power. then power, and then that power can be used for your ego, so okay, your comfort, there again, everything. There again, we're going to the hard power, Yeah. right? So how would you distinguish then hard power, immoral power, soft power, moral power, um, you know, What's this? Where's the good and bad boundary line? How do we um, sh make a transformation here? Soft power is is value based. Soft power is spiritual, and it's also cultural. Mm -hmm. See, that's another interesting thing that when a country loses its its um, values, culture also tends to go with it. How does a country lose its values? Yeah, as I said, I don't think it's just lost. I think it's it's the media. It's it's very manipulated. I would say that's well, who, why I come back to thinking. Yeah. So the people who are in power at the moment, you would say, in uh, p the political arena, the scientific arena, the financial arena, the military arena, who are using hard power. Associated with that hard power is the necessity of denying the feminine, denying the soft, in order to have its validity, are you, yes. is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. And that's why I think if we use gentleness as a virtue, we don't fight against what's happening, Yes. but we use, you know, more this thing of shakti, you know, this inner All power, right. this spiritual power, to position ourselves. So how do you position yourself in Shakti gentleness and then start dealing with issues of power and application of power using power? It's very connected with self-confidence. Mm -hmm. So when I know who I am and I believe in who I am and what I'm doing, then I will take a stand and, and, and keep my eyes open. <laughs> Let's talk more about self-respect. Can mm. you go into the depth of that? Because that seems to be a key here. If a person doesn't have self-respect, they tend to go towards the hard power. Yeah, either hard or soft in the wrong way, because if people don't have self-respect, they allow themselves to be abused. So then it's weakness, mm. not It's power. weakness, yeah. And then, of course, there's a lot of people who will take advantage of that weakness. So there's a very unhealthy power play in that and and the thing is like women in the world generally have only started claiming their power in the last 50 60 years it hasn't been very long yeah, why they, did women let themselves be totally subjugated it's a choice you know that's the thing we could have woken up earlier i mean it's it's really a matter of being aware yes Yes. Yeah, there's many issues of disempowerment. Mm. I mean, for example, I, I was um, uh, intrigued by this idea of a country losing its values, whether that can have any, any relationship with a country losing its position of power in the world, and maybe it becomes a weak economy or a subservient uh, culture, colonized or something like this, that could cause it to lose its moral values mm -hmm. yeah yeah because it it, um, it will accept what other people are saying about it you know and well, let it will itself... accept or it will be forced yeah. because there yeah. is um, you know violence you're talking about gentleness as non-violence but what violence will do to distort a person's consciousness perhaps mm -hmm. people don't realize yeah 
Because you see, one of the things that morality is about is punitive correction. Yes. And now you're talking about non-violence, gentleness. How would you correct a deviant person, social deviant, or somebody who has done some crime or something using soft power or gentle gentleness. Yeah, there was another very interesting quote and it was saying, I've forgotten who it's from, but it was saying, the opposite to war is creativity, not peace. That's interesting. So I think the opposite, you know, to correct this kind of negative power, it won't be by being just soft and gentle, uh -huh. but also creative and, you know, really being smart in okay. the way like for example just give let, let me give you an example there was a businessman who i knew who was doing construction work in thailand and the mafia the they were wanting a lot a very big bribe and he said look i don't pay bribes but i'm very happy to build you a clinic because these people actually were very disadvantaged people yeah. and that's the thing who's who's good and who's bad in this game because yeah. the people that look good are not always the ones that are good and and what do you do if you've got no power if you're powerless so they were wanting something they don't want just the rich to take everything from them they That's want right. something yeah. so this man could recognize what's the bigger picture and they accepted very happily that he would build a clinic in the second phase a school and you know both are happy because i think we need to contribute to society if we're profiting from it anyway yeah there is a, a very interesting ideal in indian culture which talks about you know the different castes and their duties the dharma so the people who earn a lot of money uh, it's part of the dharma to take care of the disadvantaged ones and if that equitability or um, that balancing out is happening by a person's sensitivity mm -hmm. uh, then there's no problem that's a very good definition definition of a gentleman and gentleness right. where we have that power and we exercise it in the best way so then you're using your power to come into good relationship with people who may not have all the advantages mm. you have, but they will co uh, cooperate with you and the social fabric will be healthy. And the balance. Mm. Because sometimes people uh, talk about, you know, is a hierarchical society, does it have to be like that? Can we not have a flat society? And in Brahma Kumaris, we um, always learn about the idea of a kingdom. I mean, there's the animal kingdom, there's the mineral kingdom, and there's the human kingdom. But um, kingdoms are fraught with abuse of power. Mm. So is it possible to somehow use soft power to reestablish a, a kingdom in in uh, humanity which is not filled with aggression and in fact in India I've met over a thousand leaders living here for the last two and a half years and very top leaders in their field and I do see I know from the newspapers you would probably think that things are very bad in India and probably a lost case but I've met so many people who are practicing that dharma mm -hmm. whether they're doctors or educators or business people they are giving back in a very significant way to the society so do you think then that perhaps the media is giving us uh, not exactly a true picture of what's going on no it's not balanced it's certainly not a balanced picture but as people say, you know, good news doesn't sell. <laughs> you know, so if a thousand tell. people don't get run over, there's no news. If one person gets hit by a lorry, then it's news. So I don't know how to <laughs> readdress that. Well, we, we come to the relationship between greed and violence. And so if we look at the opposite side of that, is there a connection between gentleness and generosity? It's the same first three letters. Must be, yeah. In your personal life, how did you develop um, 
and, and why did you give importance to mm. gentleness? We were doing a workshop, uh, an interfaith kind of gathering on love, and a a priest was not able to join us. And so I spoke to him on the phone. I said, what would you have said? And he said, I just don't think you can be too gentle these days. And I remember I was in Hong Kong and I was going on the train, like the underground, and I was looking at everyone's faces and I was thinking, oh, everyone needs so much gentleness. Their faces look so tired and painful. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was just thinking, and since then, I think I've never forgotten this word. I also try to wear shoes that are quiet, try not to, you know, hurt plants if I walk past, close drawers and doors. It's something that I can practice practically in daily life. It's not just something to keep in, in mind, but it's something that really can be demonstrated. But also, I, you know, I practice something like holding a virtue in the mind and as one of my nice friends said it'll just go to wherever you need it mm -hmm. and I feel that happening that if I just hold gentleness it'll either go to my speech or my eyes or my thoughts and have you noticed while you've been doing this practice because it's a spiritual practice that's not just you sit and you meditate and think of gentleness but it's 24 hours a day mm. And what have you seen in your practice, as you've been practicing with gentleness, impact on other people? I think in the beginning, like you said, if there's not a balance, it is a bit soft. So in the beginning, I, I almost got eaten <laughs> because I became so soft. So I think then I balanced it with power. And power to me is, is not something external, but it's consciousness. So having the gentleness and consciousness, awareness, was the way that I was able to move in my life with gentleness. Okay, so you became a rose with a couple of thorns. Ah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look a little bit more at consciousness. Um, when you talk about consciousness and you're going inside and you're trying to become consciously gentle, what does that look like from the inside? First of all, it's a feeling. Mm. So when I sit with that word gentleness, it's, a, it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. I feel that all my organs relax into that word gentleness. It's a very healthy, I'm sure it's a health producing awareness to start with. But then it, it comes, I would say, through eyes, through speech. And uh, I don't think any of us like to hurt other people, but because of not having maybe skills of communication or you know our upbringing, we're not, um, I mean, really educated to be gentle, I think, in our words and in our attitudes. So, you know, we, I needed to work on myself in that way. So, Sister Morney, thank you so much. We're coming to the end of our time together on gentleness. It's been intriguing. Uh, I think probably for our viewers, it's given us some added um, sensitivity, added perceptiveness into the impact of uh, something so soft. Uh, it was very interesting that you raised this um, concept of soft power and hard power, and that we really need to be consciously moving into this other way of uh, using power and feeling our power where softness is not the same as weakness. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, all of you who have been with us today for your participation in this conversation about gentleness and being with us on the program Virtues for Life. Virtues are our treasure. Uh, these are the things that are our foundation and we have to think about them. Let us ponder on this virtue of gentleness. Try to feel it deep within ourselves, almost as a perfume that exudes from the one who practices gentleness. And at the same time, to be in our strength, 
like that image of the elephant. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing all of you again very soon. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. Om Shanti.